guess what? We have a fantastic show here for you today. Really it good is, show. Really good show. There he goes. <laughs> it, by the way, this is the Real Estate 360 show. This is not a uh, entertainment show. <laughs> Although we try to get some entertainment in here best we can. You're pretty entertaining, Steve. Oh, well, yeah, you are too. So uh, what are we talking about today? Well, you know Mr. what? I think that we should do some... By the way, who are you? I am glad you asked. Yes. <laughs> My name is Jason O. Miles. I am the hashtag the real estate trainer. Yes, sir. And you are hashtag unemployable. unemployable. Steve Conley, by the way. I love it. Uh, uh, hey, I was meeting somebody the other day, and they, uh, they were at some meeting of mine. And they said, yeah, I saw your show because we'd done a little networking. Network. Uh, when I say networking, I don't mean networking. I mean marketing, yeah. email. So I didn't know this person. but So anyway, we ended up at a networking meeting, and she said, yeah, I was watching your show, and I saw your hashtag, hashtag unemployable. <laughs> she said, I want that. That's right. That's <laughs> right. That's that's pretty sharp, though. I mean, yeah. it's, a true, it's a true story, though. Yeah. You know, you got to love it. But what are we talking about today? You know, well, I think today we should talk a little bit about, you know, the marketing basics, you know, like marketing 101, as it was laid out by our good friends here. Yes. You know, uh, and uh, because a lot of people just don't do those things. And there's there are some things that are a little tricky, which we don't have to really get into right now, we'll probably kind of breeze over. But there are the fundamentals of it that. I think everyone should know yeah. and and take full advantage of, and many many people don't. And it and it goes: How do you find houses? How do you sell houses? How do you find buyers? How do you you know just all of that great stuff? You know, people want to know how do you build a list of active buyers that large? You know, and there are some things that we still use that a lot of people think are archaic, but it still works. Um, really, we ha we use archaic stuff. What I mean, you know, as archaic as a thing can be in five or six years, you know what I mean. <laughs> right. <laughs> but we're talking about technology here, so six months from now, we'll Man. be living in a different technological world. You know, every <laughs> we've been around long enough to see the cycles. Yes. In this real estate industry, yes, and indeed. you know that we can recognize them as they roll around. You know, what's going to come next? Well, last time this happened, so maybe it's going to happen again sort of like that you know absolutely yeah. let me do a little uh housekeeping here real quick okay so listen guys if you haven't checked us out on itunes spotify google play youtube check out the real estate 360 show on any of those you know subscribe uh comment you know engage with us let us know what you like we love it we love the feedback we love to be able to deliver the content that you want to hear as a listener you know engage with us let us know Go to the real estate 360 show.com and see what events are coming up. See what we have to offer you. Um, just all kind of great stuff. So check us out there. We want to hear from you. We want to communicate with you. Love us like we love you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so back that to it. Is, <laughs> that could be a memorable moment in, 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 in you know, broadcast production. It right could there. be. It could. Be. <laughs> I love the people. You know, um, so we were sitting here uh, just a moment ago, and our audio producer said, "You know, you guys started talking about bandit signs." Yeah. And he said, "I really never noticed them so much until you started talking about them, and now he sees them everywhere." Yeah. And really, what he has done is now that he's become aware of them. Uh, his reticular activator has been <laughs> awakened. I love these phrases, man. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody has one. Uh, you obviously have one. Oh, well, now we're talking to our producer. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> it's an interactive show. It's interactive. <laughs> uh, but, yes, everybody has a, a reticular activator, of course, because he said, hey, I didn't notice these, but now I do. So, yeah. da, da, da. It's sort of like, hey. You, you know, you go buy a yellow car. I mean, I don't know why anybody would do that. But <laughs> say you do that, and all of a sudden you look around, everybody has a yellow car. You Not everybody, but you see them everywhere. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's really what a lot of the Internet marketing is, you know? It's yeah. like I mean, you did that. You bought a car. Yeah. And then I started seeing those cars everywhere. That, <laughs> that last car you got? Which one? That Buick. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You bought that car, yeah, and now they're everywhere. 
Yeah. You never notice them until you notice it, until you're conscious of it, I should say. Can I tell you a little story about that? I'd love to hear this story. So I was telling, I tell people that I got a new car, you know, and and I said, it's not a new car, you know, it's a used car. And they said, right, what'd you get? And I'll say a Buick. And they say, it's like their eyes start to glaze over, you know. They they still make those? (laughs) That's right. (laughs) And, and they say, well, what kind? I said, a, a, a Lucerne, you know, a Buick Lucerne. <laughs> it's like, uh, I know I can, I can actually hear them thinking, well, why would he buy a Buick? I mean, what's wrong with that guy? You know, and I said, and I, by the way, I said, and this one is your grandfather's Buick. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And they're like, what? <laughs> I bought it just like I would buy a single family house. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's it's like twenty four thousand miles on a twenty eleven, yeah. and I paid about half what it's worth. Right, that's why I'm buying a you know a Buick. But anyway, a hustler is a hustler, man. You know, it's, it's, it's I mean houses, cars. It's currency. It's all yeah. just currency. Yeah. So you switch an asset to cash or back and forth. Yeah, that's the whole game. That's right. You know, and and if if you see the opportunity there, because uh, we have another friend of ours that does that. Right? Yeah. Uh, Big Cody. You know, he... Well, both of them. Justin, too, you know. Yeah, that's for sure. (laughs) But, you know, they do real estate, but they also are seeing opportunities everywhere they go. Yeah. So, you know, if they can buy a boat or a jet ski or a car or a truck and, you know, pick it up for this price and sell it in a week for, you know, two, three thousand dollars, which is what they do. Right. Why not? But how do they sell it? They probably do some marketing. That's exactly right. And uh, that's what our show's about today is marketing yeah. and, you know, how to get things moving. Right. You know? So let's let's talk about that from a, beginner, a beginner's perspective because we get that a lot. You know, we get a lot of people that say, well, you know, how do I find buyers, you know, to buy my properties or how do I find properties? You know, how do I market for this stuff? Mm-hmm. Right? Now, I tell people constantly how easy it is and they, they, they either – don't believe me, or they say, well, you've been doing it for so long, it's, you know, it's just second nature to you. But well, there's some truth to that. Yeah, there, it is, but it really is that easy. It really is. All right, so back in the day, <laughs> uh, I was using Craigslist to build a list. You know, we'd take a, pro- a picture of a property, create a little, a little ad, a little, you know, whatever, and put it out there, and people were calling. They'll call and say, hey, is that property still available? I write down their information, put them in our MailChimp account. And, yes. you know, we got 40 or 50 active buyers every week from the ads that we ran. It's literally that easy. Now, you know, there are other places that you can get. Uh, by the way, it's 2019, and I still use Craigslist. It's 2019, and so do I. You know? A lot of people think that that's just dead. You know, why are you using that? You know, it's no good. You're not going to find anything there. No one's going to come from it. Everybody on there is a scammer. There's a lot. <laughs> now, you know, let's get real. There is. Uh, but, there you is. know, when they start out with a certain phrase and and maybe they're emailing you and their English isn't quite right, hey, yeah. that's a clue. You yeah. know? I, I mean, mean, you know, somebody, I mean, don't we all have a Nigerian cousin? Who was the daughter or son of a Nigerian king that needs our help? Oh, you know, I'm getting, I'm getting ready to get twenty million dollars. You know, you know what just, I mean? I, I got my paperwork in, and yeah, I, I paid a little fee, now. you know, to get it. But I'm getting it. <laughs> you just wait, and we'll be buying some houses. That's know? right. <laughs> they got, they got to park that money somewhere, and your bank account is the perfect place. Just give them the information. They yes, need. sir. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. But, uh, but for what we do on Craigslist, it's. Uh, you know, we got a deal off of Craigslist uh, a month ago. Yeah. Right. So we've got a we just put ads up there for people that want to sell a property or are having problems with a property, and they, we just refresh it and let the phone ring when it rings. Doesn't cost anything. Yeah. We're we're back to you know problem solving again. Yeah. And so really, you're out there. I'm out there. We're both out there asking people, hey. What kind of problem do you have associated with real estate? We don't, you know, we're not really in the business of solving their marital problems or their health problems. That's not our job. Right, right. <laughs> you know, so we want specific problems related to real estate that we can help them with. 
But yeah. these marketing channels are what brings those problems to us, or those people with those issues to us. Right. And today, you know, we've got great places like uh, Facebook Marketplace is a, is a great place right now. Yes. You know, it's a fantastic place to find opportunities across the board. I mean, who to thunk that you could go there and buy 50 cases for your i or you know for your iPhone at uh, one time. You know what I mean? It's amazing what you can buy on the Facebook Marketplace. Bought a car. Did you? Got a really good deal on a car for my son. Okay. Facebook Marketplace. Did you really? Yeah. How about that? Had to do it. But I wasn't there looking for cars. Oh. I was there looking for houses. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so, but it, there's just so much there. And it's, there's a lot of activity. And there's a lot of uh, information sharing there. In between, you know, real estate, you know, sometimes, you know, I stepped out of it. And uh, I used to, I, I was selling stuff on Facebook Marketplace. Yeah. I was selling little used office equipment. See, <laughs> you know, so. yeah, it's just a fantastic place. You know, there's so many, I mean, and we're talking about things that cost you nothing to market. Okay. Potentially. Yeah. I mean, you just got to do it. You and, know, the technology these days is amazing. I, I remember when I had 25,000 people on my fax <laughs> database, you know, and we had to <laughs> fax out 24. So I had a computer that did nothing but fax. Wow. You know, it just, it call you know it call everybody one at a time. And they would ring their faxes and send them a flyer on a house at nine percent. We'll check this out. I, yeah. uh, we're going to take a break so everyone can check their fax machine. Yeah, they'll do that. Yeah. And then uh, when we come back, we'll bring you back up. Sounds like a plan, <laughs> my man. My man. <laughs> We'll buy your house. Click 833willbuy.com. That's 833-W-E-L-L-B-U-Y.com. Or call 833willbuy. Se habla español. Llámanos. Call us today. And welcome back. It's the Real Estate 360 Show. Steve, you are a hoot. What? You are a hoot. You make me laugh, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you made me laugh, too. And, uh, so, and we, so we we were talking about faxes, weren't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah, faxes. So I don't think you know it, it, you know they're still kind of relevant. I mean, we were talking here on the break about you know when faxes are are used current currently, you know. And, yeah. And um, and you know there has to be some validity to all of that because they still make them. You know, they still make all in ones and they still sell them and they're there. Uh, you know. No one's going to the store to buy a, a Betamax machine anymore. You know what I mean? This may come <laughs> as a surprise to you, but you know there are people that still have landlines. That as is, a as yes. a matter of fact, there's a significant part of the population that still has landlines. Yeah, that's what they grew up with, and that's I have to assume that's in the rural rural parts of uh, of the land. I think it's all over. I think it might be more of an age demographic rather than a geographic demographic. Ooh. I love your. That's a. That's a. I love how that rolled right <laughs> off your tug there. That was challenging. <laughs> hey, but you know you don't have to do. I'm just going to let everybody know right now. You don't have to build a fax database. No. These days. No. The technology don't. is such such that, hey, you can do it automatically, and um, we use we use Mailchimp because it was simple, cheap, and easy. You know, pretty much to jump into that, yeah. and uh, it still is, yeah. and. And so we we have a little tab on our website that you click on it, and you can add yourself mm -hmm. to our database, mm -hmm. so that you can receive uh, listings of our, anything that we have coming out, any specials, any changes, all that great stuff. So, and but the, the the whole thing is, you'll be able to create a lot of that for yourself. I mean, the same way we did. Yeah. You know, I mean, it doesn't have to be Mailchimp. There's a bunch of other services out there. They're free for what is the first five hundred. People on the list Typically, or something? MailChimp's changed things up a little bit. I yeah. think it's actually free for the first 2,000 now wow. on MailChimp. But as soon as you jump over that and you add some other features, and now it's $50 a month. Yeah, yeah. So, but even then, but by the time you get to that point, you're, you're turning some deals. Absolutely. You know, you're, you're turning deals. But, um, again, I wanted to talk about another, yet another free way to take advantage of of your marketing efforts, whether you're looking for buyers or sellers, okay, or if you've you know maybe you have a, a house to promote, 
you know, an opportunity to promote. Uh, going back to Facebook, you know, the Facebook groups, right? So a lot of people think, you know, I start a Facebook page and then I just put stuff there. And all my friends are going to see it. Yeah. Right? Now, first of all, all your friends aren't going to see it. And that has to do with algorithms from, from Facebook. Only some of your friends are going to see it, right? But your friends might not be buying real estate. You know, you might not be from, you know, the state that your friends are living in. And, you, you know, you might be in Atlanta and your friends might be in California. You know, they don't really care, generally speaking, that you're selling a property in Atlanta, right? Right. Not so, generally. Why well, no. do they care? So you got to get involved in some of the real estate groups in the area that you're in on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Because guess what? Every time you post into those groups, everyone in the group has an opportunity to see it. Right. Everyone in the group has an opportunity to see it. And some of those people are going to share that opportunity with other people. So that's a great way to sell the deals that you have. Absolutely. For free. You know, I'm, I'm kind of laughing a little bit. I can see that. The reason is, and I, well, I haven't <laughs> talked to you about this because it was kind of weird. I had a dream last night. It was about Facebook. Really? Yeah. And the guy, and it was actually about, you know, Justin, the guy that we kind of brought on yeah. as, as part of our team. Yeah. And, you know, he uses all the social media and he, he brought like a dozen people to our last seminar. Correct. So I had a dream that uh, Justin was on Facebook and I was on Facebook and it was, we were doing the Facebook live and it was like, it was like, being able to announce to the world by almost like one-to-one -one video mm. that we're going to talk about this and we're going to show you this. And mm -hmm. it was, it was quite profound. Mm -hmm. It was like, Oh, this is kind of what this is about. Yeah. And it's a great marketing tool. I mean, it is fantastic. That Facebook live is fantastic. Uh, YouTube also Instagram also, you know, if you just, are willing to put yourself out there because you got to let people know what you do. You know, and, and the reason this is significant, why I'm, I'm kind of laughing about it is I've never used Facebook Live. <laughs> you know, I don't really do that. Right, right. So, and, and I'm having a dream about it. That's because is you have that a, a team. Clue? It is because you have a team that does it, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, we all don't do the greatest things in certain areas, right? right? Or even attempt to do those things. I'm going to do it now. I mean, yeah, uh, it is pretty hey, fun. You know, it's like a message, you know. You know, it's, it's pretty fun. Because you're connecting with people live, yeah, right? So, you know, we do these little events on, on Facebook all the time where we're, you know, people will ask questions and we'll say, okay, listen, you know, one of the biggest ones we get is, you know, how can I make $100,000 a year in real estate? So, you know, I break it down. Here's what it takes. Here's how much it is a month. Here are options that you can utilize, you know, whether it's, you know, rental properties, fix and flips, wholesaling, whatever, right? And we go through what those things are. But, you know, we set up these events and we let people know, hey, this is what we're doing. And we share it with our friends. We share it in those real estate groups. Yeah. And people come and they watch and they pay attention. And, and we say, and oh, by the way, you know, if you want to hear more about this or learn more about this, go to www.realestate360show.com. You know, click the link. It's right here. You know, we're telling them what it is. The link is in the description. They can go there and, you know, you know if you want to hear more about it, come on, come on to the next event. You know, that's, thank you for that information. And as you're talking, I'm thinking, you know, we've mentioned several times about these forms and, and other ideas that we have available. I think what we're going to do, uh, and I'm just talking about this again for the first time. On, <laughs> hey, you know, let's put it out there. What the heck? Let's put all that stuff on a link on our website. I think we should, you know, because the reality of it is this, guys. We've got the information, we've got the experience to know how we're doing it. We're growing, we're learning every day and everything that we do, right? Mm -hmm. So why not just go ahead and share it? Can you go out and buy these things? You sure can. I know people that sell, you know, like uh, like we talked about last week, uh, the multifamily. A multifamily uh, calculator, a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. Some people charge a lot more than that, right? But it's there, you know, and if we can help people, why not? Yeah, and then, you know, you guys would probably bring it to us first, you know, as a recipro reciprocity. Yeah, I mean, it just it, that's just the way things it's happen, not a requirement. Right? You know, it's not a requirement, but that's how it is. I mean, hey, I don't, am I doing this right? Can you look at this for me? Yeah. You know, this is uh, the this is the information that I got. Am I putting it in there properly, or or how do I do it? 
you know, so yeah, we'll probably make a couple tutorials as well and say, Hey, this is what this is, you know, just make it available for people because you're listening to the show because you want to know how to do this or how to do it better. Right. And that's what we have to, I believe, offer our listeners and the people that are watching us right now on YouTube. Yes, sir. Yes. You know, we were talking about real estate <laughs> cycles and so forth. And, uh, and you mentioned something earlier, uh, hashtag the real estate trainer you mentioned earlier well how do i how do i get started and what do i do and you know you just have to start yeah because we've seen the cycles i've been in and out of real estate a little bit over the last 35 years and i remember starting up again you know okay first thing i need to do is you know do my marketing and do something to create a list and i can remember you know i have one person on my list mm. And that's where it starts. That's right. And then a few, you know, days later, maybe there's five or 10 or 20 or something, and you just, and then you're off to the races. That's right. Just start. Yep. Go set the things up for free. That's right. Go get on Craigslist. Put the ads in. Go find a house. Mm -hmm. You know, your ads don't have to say, I have a house for sale, if you don't have a house for sale. <laughs> that's right. You, they don't have to say that. They can say, I'd like to buy a house. Mm -hmm. Or you can get on Craigslist and find people who have houses for sale. Mm -hmm. Joint venture with those guys. That's right. And a lot of the things we talked a lot about was, you know, <clears throat> how to get involved, make money in real estate when you're while you're learning. Yeah. And that's by selling other people's properties mm -hmm. and learning about the process, being involved in the process. Um, because that's where you're going to learn how to market anyway, right? You're going to take that property and you're going to put it on any one of those, you know, uh, social media formats. Uh, maybe you go to a local RIA meeting. You know, maybe you start a, a, a meeting. You yeah. know, you, you go to Eventbrite and you start looking up um, real estate meetup groups and you go and you start meeting people and connecting and communicating and learning and giving and receiving, all of that. Those are the things you have to do. Now, you don't have to do it every day if you've got a day job, but, you know, find something once a week, get out there and do it. I think what you're saying is you don't have to know everything to get started. Yeah, you don't have to know everything about a thing to do a thing. Right, and you, once you start, because you may not know what you need to know until you get started. And right. then when you get started, you're, you're, it's going to come to you, oh, I need to know this and I need to know that and so forth. That's right. I equate it to reading a book on how to ride a bike. Yeah. You can read that book. <laughs> And know it word for word, but you're not going to know how to ride a bike until you get on the bike and all those little muscles have to start working together. Right. Right. You can, you can memorize all the mechanics, but your body won't be able to memorize the mechanics until you actually physically do it. So just do it. You're always learning. All of this is constantly evolving. So stop trying to wait until you're, you know, you think you know everything before you can, because you'll taking, never know it all. And taking the action will help you get over the fear, which is the only thing that's holding you. That's all right. Let's take a break. Hi, this is Sammy with Sammy Hadid Real Estate, Keller Williams. Are you looking for a top producing agent who will look out for your best interests, top dollar on the sale of your home, a well-negotiated contract, an efficient closing? please call me at 305-978-4249. I'm more than happy to set up a consultation. I'll put together a proposal for you to net top dollar for your home, what it is that I'm doing to get all my homes sold. Then you can decide what's best for you. Again, I'll do whatever it takes to get your home sold for top dollar, and I promise you that I will protect your equity with my life. 305-978-4249. Sammy Hadid, H-A-D-I-D. -D. All right, we are back. We are back. And uh, Steve. Yes. You know, we're talking about all these ways that people can get involved, you know, marketing one-on-one, -on -one, free, very, very affordable ways to do things that everyone has access to. And I, I really just want to know, like, in your mind, you know, from your experience in your life, you know, what kind of, what can you share with us yeah. about, uh, a time in your life when it was, oh, you know, a story. You'd like to hear yeah. one of my, okay, sure. Yeah. I have one. And it seems you like. one, you say, huh? Yeah, well, at least. <laughs> well, you know, um, a lot of times I'll just start looking 
online mm-hmm. and start looking for houses and mm-hmm. deals and stuff and then start making connections, you know, with realtors and other investors and so forth. I'm looking for the serendipity, you know, mm-hmm. the the value in something. And guess what I do? I just start making offers. Mm-hmm. I say, oh, wow, there's good. You know, we talked about in the last show, you know, turning over the, the stones and trying to find the, the glitter, you know, the the – so that's all I'm looking for. Yeah. And so the last time was uh, that I can think of, that is, uh, I was online and I and uh, this uh, realtor that I had come up with had said, hey, you know, I've got this this house. And I said, wow, that looks pretty good. Mm. I'll write an offer on it, you know. And so I write these offers. I hadn't seen the house. And uh, actually this one, I never saw the house. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I, I saw the opportunity. I saw the location and I saw the numbers and I, and I said, okay, it's, I saw the pictures. So it looks like it's going to cost this amount, you know, to fix it. I wrote the contract. They accepted it. I sent it out on, on some kind of marketing database. At, at that point, I didn't have much, mm-hmm. but um, I had enough. I had, I think I had some MailChimp stuff going on and, and sold it in a few days and cleared uh, you know, seven or eight thousand dollars on it, mm. and so this is this is just, you know, from experience. Mm-hmm. And how do you get the experience? You know, you got to do it. You start out doing things, and you just it's this is all comparison. Yeah. And so this house was on Metropolitan Avenue, in down in on the Adair Park. Of Metropolitan, on the Adair Park side of mm-hmm. Metropolitan. Of course, it was on that busy street. And yeah. It was pretty simple. It ended up that I had the contract from the seller. And this is about control. A lot of this is about control. Who has control of the property, mm-hmm. whether it be by contract or by the deed? Right. So, obviously, I had the contract. So, someone has to have an equitable position in that to be able to. To do what we're doing. Right. And so they have to have a real signed piece of contract, piece of paper that is a contract that says, yes, I have the right to purchase this property, mm-hmm. purchase and sell contract. Uh, that property, that, that property then, you know, is now a, not a property anymore from our point of view. It's a contract. Mm-hmm. So now we have a piece of paper that has value. That piece, piece of paper has to be assignable. doesn't have to be. You have the equitable equity, I'm sorry, equitable title to the property. An equitable claim. An equitable claim, exactly. Uh, so now I have the option of if I'm allowed to or if, it, if there's no prohibitions in that contract, I can assign that to somebody else for value. I can establish a value. They can establish a value. If it works, we agree on that and do an assignment. Mm. Or I can just sell it and do a double closing on that. Mm -hmm. I can close it and then turn around and resell it immediately. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that I ended up doing a contract with another wholesaler who had a buyer in New Zealand. Mm. And it was a cash transaction. He wired his earnest money over and then he said yeah i'll i'll do the transaction and he wired the rest and closed it out just like that game over i did a double closing on that and, particular one. and and how did you find that deal just uh, by creating relationships or developing relationships exactly it ended up coming that came from a realtor mm-hmm. who had uh somebody else in her office who was dealing with a bank who foreclosed properties so it was actually a foreclosure mm-hmm. that i sold to That's another cool. investor yeah. And and now you this is something else. You have to be aware and sensitive of what's going on in the background. Mm. So in the background is a lender with REO properties. And in between that, me and that lender is a realtor, two realtors, a listing and a selling realtor. Right. That listing realtor has a relationship with that the bank. The bank. Or now, more specifically, the REO or the real estate-owned department. Exactly. Now, I'm aware of that. So I'm going to structure my transaction 
as a double closing. Mm-hmm. Why? Because I want to protect her relationship with that that REO lender. Mm-hmm. If they see a HUD statement with me in there assigning that contract for any amount of money, then all of a sudden, in their minds, that realtor hadn't done her job. Right. And plus, they'll probably squash the deal. Ex- they'll squash the deal or and or they'll – that will kill the relationship with that that realtor. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to do that. Yeah, because I want to. I want her to bring me more stuff. You That's know? right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And you know, uh, developing a relationship doesn't cost any money. Correct. You know, um, nurturing that relationship realistically doesn't cost any money. Except, <laughs> I'm going to say this. Except for all that 18 unit, it cost me over a hundred thousand dollars <laughs> to to have create that new relationship. Yeah, and in what way did it cost you? I could have sold it to somebody else. Oh, okay. So it's the I lost. had a contract. Yeah. yeah. To sell that to somebody else. Full price, if I remember. Well, it was really close. Yeah. Because that was, was like seven fifty. That that lady. Seven, that lady was paying seven fifty. Seven twenty. Seven twenty. She came in. Yeah. yeah. That's uh. Yes, sir. You can hear the sighs over here. I'm telling you. Yeah. Right, let's have a moment of silence. <laughs> that's, okay, that's, that's enough. That's enough. Let's that. get on. No with more it. reminiscing. But you know what? I, I too have a. Story. Do you have a story? I'd love. And to it's hear. one that I know that you've heard, but I want to share it with with the folks that are listening and watching if they're on uh, YouTube. Uh, when I got started after the crash, when I had to rebuild my life, I didn't have any money. I was broke. You know, I just had the know how and the desire. Uh, to get back on my feet and using real estate as that, you know, financial foundation for me. I had $300 to my name, (laughs) $300 to my name. I ordered because at Home Depot, the bandit signs were like eight bucks or something like that. You know, and you got to still got to get the stakes. You got to get the staple hammer. You know, you got to do all this stuff. Um, So I ordered just, Blank, um, um, corrugated signs. With blank the metal corrugated, the plastic post. corrugated signs, and I ordered. I believe it was twenty of them. Okay, because I didn't have much, right? That's one hundred sixty dollars, right there. <laughs> oh no, I didn't pay eight bucks. You know, I ordered them online. Oh, okay. you know, at one of those sign companies, and I think I paid four dollars uh, for each one, which was really expensive because you know, of course, the more you buy, the cheaper they are, right? But I think I paid, you know, four, four and change for, for them. Mm-hmm. And then I bought some steaks. Mm-hmm. But I bought them blank, right? And then I went to Home Depot, and I bought the big, huge Magnum um, Sharpie. With the, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah that And the uh, staple hammer. And, um, you know, I was all in now for less than 100 bucks. You know, that was done. I just had to wait on them to come. But in the meantime, I printed out flyers from my home computer. You know, four to a sheet, cut, cut them in quarters with my meat shears. I like to point that out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, I went door knocking. I, I identified a neighborhood yeah. where I knew that the uh, prices were going up, and I went door knocking, knocking on doors. Found the ugly house. I call it the ugly house technique. And I went over there in the middle of the day, and I started to look at the ugly house. And then I just paid attention to who was watching me. Yeah. And then when I was done at the ugly house, I went over to the person that was watching me and said, hey, did you, do you by chance know who owns this home? I'd like to talk to them about buying it. And that conversation leads into, have you, start, have you ever thought about selling your house? You know, do you know anyone around here that wants to sell their house? And I just kept knocking on doors until literally found someone across the street two doors over who said, you know what? I just I went through a divorce with my husband. I want out of this house. I don't want to fix it. I don't want to clean it. I just want to pack my bags. And that's literally what she said. Yeah. So we made a deal that paid off her house, paid off her credit cards. She didn't have to dump all the stuff that was left in the house. You know, we... We took that on, but of course we had to put that or subtract that cost of that from that house. Sure. But it took me three weeks to find that deal. Yep. It took me two weeks to sell the deal. Right. I got $100 earnest money 
to, to put it, but I didn't put it in. I had 10 days. Okay. I had 10 days due diligence before my earnest money had to be delivered to the attorney, which was 100 bucks. Yes, sir. So I and used that 10 had days. I did. I still had 100 bucks. <laughs> but I used that 10 days to market, to market that property on social media outlets. I got a, a lady who said, I think two or three days in, I want that deal. Why would she want that deal? She wanted that deal because it was a super great deal. I got the property for sixty-seven thousand. I sold it to her for, I believe it was seventy-five thousand. Was what I was asking. It wound up being seventy-four thousand. She closed it in ten days. Thousand dollars earnest money. So that earnest money went. You know, I didn't have to come up with a hundred bucks anymore. Right. Her earnest money went to the attorney, which covered it all. Bless you, my brother. Bless you. Bless you. Mm-hmm. And it happens. You know, ten literally ten days after she signed that contract. Two weeks after I put the property under contract, I made, you know, 6800 bucks or whatever, 900 bucks, whatever it was. Right. And I was back on deck. Now it's time to start spending money for marketing. That's right. You know, but that was a no money down deal. It cost me, you know, less than 100 bucks to buy everything I needed to market. Let's take it. Let's take a break. And we'll talk about personality. Let's do it. We'll buy your house. Click 833willbuy.com. That's 833-W-E-L-L-B-U-Y.com. Or call 833willbuy. Se habla español. Llámanos. Call us today. Welcome back. And it is the uh, Real Estate 360 show. Hey, we were just talking about uh, examples and stories of people and investors and houses and you know, I wanted to talk about really quick, just mention one thing about personalities. What you heard was, okay, Steve's sitting there behind a desk, writing contracts and looking at stuff online, <laughs> never saw a house, didn't get out, you know, of, of the office, really. <laughs> I actually drove by that house because, you know, after the whole transaction was said and done, you know, about a month later, I said, oh, I wonder what that thing looks like, you know. So I drove by and it looked like, it looked like on the photos. Yeah. But um, I didn't have to see it because the investors went over and looked at it, and they said, we like it. Mm-hmm. Now, here is Jason O'Miles out there on the street, you know, handing out flyers and talking to people mm-hmm. and doing it that way. Now, you said that in such a way that, like, it doesn't happen. You know, he's on the, he's on the street handing out flyers, and he's talking to people. <laughs> Can right. you believe it? It doesn't get any more archaic than that. <laughs> He's not, he doesn't have his head down in a cell phone. He's actually, you know, head up and looking at folks in the in their eyeballs. How dare you, Mr. Miles? <laughs> <laughs> and doing deals and writing contracts and getting real estate under contract and selling it and making some money. And, right. You know, that fits right into my 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 favorite saying What's is. That? You know, you do a transaction, and it takes you a certain amount of time to do it, and you're done. And that's not a bad part-time job. No, no, no. You know, when you make $8,000 on a transaction, and you've worked on it for 10 hours. Yeah. Or 20 hours. Yeah. What's the return on your investment? It's infinite. It's infinite in terms of money, but, and it, you know, you divide that by the hour. Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. I mean, it's it's pretty good. And, you know, people are always trying to figure out how to become a millionaire. And here it is. If you want to become a millionaire, you have to make $500 an hour on a 2,000-hour work year, right? Yeah. It's 40-hour work week. You got to make 500 bucks an hour. So what do you got to do to make 500 bucks an hour? You know, this is, just, this is literally what we're Go talking about. Go to school, about. become an attorney, <laughs> get 10 years, get a reputation. But that's how you value yourself, right? <laughs> you have to value yourself based on what you feel that you're worth. If you feel you're worth... $40,000, you're probably never going to make more than $40,000. Exactly. <laughs> you, know? you know, that's exactly right. And you know, you people, set the bar for yourself. Whatever you decide is what you're going to make. That's right. And, and unfortunately, a lot of us have value and self esteem issues, including myself. And, and I didn't know it. Yeah. You know, I said, 
I can't go do that. I'm not worthy. And yeah. that was the conversation that was in my head. I didn't really hear those words. I just, yeah. but that's what it is. It's a feeling. Yeah. You know, and it's a debil- it can be a debilitating feeling. And I want to thank you for being brave and opening up to us and our listeners today. With what? It's a safe space, yes. <laughs> <laughs> How can about it be your safe? vulnerabilities, yeah. you know, about being, because we all have them. And a lot of people just really honestly, all jokes aside, they do not want to admit that they have these thoughts and they have these feelings of instability, of, of fear. Can I do this? Right. Am I worthy? Right. You know, should I be there? They, we all have it. I mean, every one of us, if we're honest with ourselves, no matter how good we are, we have these feelings. And, and the reality of that is it's those feelings that drive people to certain levels of perfection. I mean, do you honestly think people like Michael Jordan are, are, are he's what he is because he was always that confident? You know, no. Yes. It's the fear. It's He's the fear always of that failure. confident. Because he has to be. Because it's the fear of failure. It's he perception. Yeah, it's, it is. That's all it is. It's it, all about perception. He absolutely had to go through it just like everybody that's else. That's right. You know, and he that's did. Right. Yeah. That's the difference. And we all do. So embrace it is really the point we're, we're making here. You know, we've all heard the saying, you can be, do, or have anything. Yeah. Right? And, and I ask people that, do you really believe that you can be, do, or have anything? Yeah. And they all say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, I'll go on with a conversation and I'll say, well, hey, you know, well, what about you and in this particular situation? And then I invariably hear, well, yeah, but. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, so <laughs> that means you really only believe that other people can be, do, or have anything, yeah. not you. And then they start to think, oh, wait a minute. You know, hey, we can all be, do, or have anything we want. Yeah. That's for sure, you know, and it's just, look, man, you, just, you have to just get to it. You have to believe it can happen and it'll happen. You know, it's not easy to go, you know, door knocking in hundred degree weather. Yeah. It's not easy to um, talk to people, whether it's face to face or digitally, if you haven't done it before, you know, it's a matter of doing it because the first time you do it, yeah, it's probably going to be a little difficult, maybe a little uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. The second time you do it, it's going to be a little easier. And, you know, honestly, this is this is recognizing, too, we call this real estate investing, and it is. And, of course, that's the basis. That's the vehicle. That's the train that we're on to, to take us to our financial freedoms, right? Yeah. But the reality of it is we're in the marketing business. And I see people on the Internet who are fantastic at marketing. They don't know that much about real estate. Yeah. But they make a lot of money buying and selling houses. Yeah. And why? Because they're good at marketing. So I would say to anybody listening or watching and hearing us that spend as much time on your marketing and understanding the marketing as you do on the real estate Mm -hmm. techniques and ideas and strategies and and alternatives and methods all of that is is important mm-hmm. when you're talking about real estate, of course, but of primary importance is marketing. Yeah, I mean you got to get there, and then everything else kind of you know works its way out. You of course have to pay attention to it, figure out the process that works for you. Yeah, have the right pieces, the right players in play. You know, I, you know, having that great attorney is important as well. You know, some people just go out there and just get whatever attorney. I assure you, you want to stay away from the firm of Dewey, Scrum and how, <laughs> you know, you really have to focus on uh, all of these things because your attorneys are going to really tell you if they're good, if they're decent, they're going to tell you, you can do this or you can't do that. Right. And they're not going to let you get into a bad situation because it's a reflection on them because they would be the lawyer. With a caveat there, there's some attorneys out there that really don't understand investors yeah. and they're going to say, well, you know, this is not, you can't do that or that's legal or illegal or right. not legal or whatever. And most of the time they're wrong. Yeah. You yeah. know, yeah. just frankly. I mean, you, you, you do run into a lot of it. So it's important again to know the players and you know, the players by communicating with other players, Yeah, you know, and, Hey, this attorney or this firm or these firms do these kinds of uh, dealings. This is who you want to deal with. Cause they'll walk you through the right way to do it. Mm-hmm. You know, you just, they just will. I mean, we've been to attorneys, uh, to firms, where 
that were recommended maybe by agents we were dealing with. I remember one in particular. I mean, we would never go back to that attorney again, not because they were horrible, but because they were only good at what they did. Right. Not what we did, <laughs> you know. Sure. So it, it wasn't a fit for us, period. Yeah. You know. And for guys like us, you know, we are two wild and crazy guys. <laughs> you know, we, we need to have some kind of interaction and understand what's going on and sometimes even direction. Of course. You know, so that's just how that goes. And it's about the marketing. It always is about the marketing. You know, that's why VHS tapes won out over beta <laughs> tapes. Something about sure. the marketing there, I guess. I mean, otherwise, otherwise, I mean, why wouldn't you want something smaller and better quality? Yeah, I mean, who who doesn't want to own inferior products? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, I mean, it is what it is. So, what other <laughs> what other marketing ideas can we share with with our listening and watching audience in the last few minutes that we have here? Listen, today? word of mouth is the best form of marketing one can ever, ever, ever have. Mm. And how do you do that? You know, you do it by doing good business, by being a communicator and staying active with your marketing efforts. You know, people will say, well, why, why does, why do companies like Coca-Cola still market? Everybody knows what Coke is. Well, they have to, they're number one in the market. Everyone else pales in comparison to their ability to market and their ability to sell and their ability to be far reaching around the world, you know? So <clears throat> number one is going to be number one because they are number one. Number two will have a small segment of that market, but doesn't mean that they're inferior either. Uh, I don't want to get too far into that, but word of mouth is what carries you. I mean, and I'm using McDonald's here. I mean, uh, Coke, Coke as, Coke. as a, uh, uh, that's a great again, that's it. there we go. I did it. I did it. I said McDonald's, <laughs> yeah. right? Look at that's marketing. Okay. That's marketing. It's word of mouth. I mean, how many times, have you driven down the street with your kids or your grandkids and they see the golden arches and they all, all the kids, oh, McDonald's, McDonald's, we got to go, got to go. And you feel compelled to take them you know, because the, they've done such a great job with those kids, man. A reporter, <laughs> a reporter said, well, why do you guys market every month? And, and why don't you just, you know, save that money one month or something? They said, well, if we stop marketing for, for three months, the number two brand, Pepsi-Cola, would be number one. Yeah. That's that's how powerful marketing is. Bill you know? Gates said, if I had fifty dollars to spend on marketing, or if I had fifty dollars, I'd spend forty nine of it on marketing. He said that? Yeah. Yeah. That's because he's got software that costs nothing to reproduce. He's a marketer. <laughs> I mean, he, he's a marketer. I mean, that's I mean he's a he marketer. Is a marketer. <laughs> well, he's also uh he's pretty pretty good strategist when it comes to the legalities and, and getting a, a, a an office system. In every single computer on the right. planet. I mean, he wanted to do that, but let's <laughs> let's be let's be clear here. I mean, we're talking about someone who changed the way everyone does everything. There was no Not groundwork true. laid. He had to lay it all. Can you imagine the legalities that he had to go through? You know, I mean, it's he was paving a new way, a new direction. Yeah, and it was marketing that did it, and it'll be marketing that does it for our listeners and everyone else that wants to be out there. Put your money where your mouth is. Right. Be who you say you are, and you'll be all right. Yes, you will. So, and I want to thank you. So go to YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, all that great stuff. Let us know what you think. We love you, and we will see you next week.